Telly has a thing for virgins. Unemployed, directionless, and with no interest in altering his ways, skater teenager Telly wants one thing and one thing only sex. And he'll get it by any means necessary, pressuring the girls he's interested in. As he plans to take another girl's virginity that very night, Jenny has discovered that she is HIV positive after only having one single sexual experience, unprotected sex with Telly. Searching the streets of New York for any trace of the boy who took her virginity, aiming to make him aware of the harm he can cause via unprotected sex, Jenny is working against a tight clock as Telly moves quickly onto his next target like nothing happened. This is Larry Clark's controversial 90s cult classic Kids, an uncompromising, unflinching and uncomfortable drama portraying a listless young Generation X subculture of skaters with little to no opportunity beyond the present. Kids is a film which illustrates an unsettling reality that many viewers may wish to ignore. With his experience as a photographer, Larry Clark's feature-length directorial debut aims to provide a documentary-like authenticity to its characters and their experiences, never shying away from the ugly and graphic. So committed to its narrative of sexually predatory teenagers and to the necessity for consent, Kid still understandably disturbs and offends viewers to this day. One of the significant factors when considering the authenticity of the characters in Kids is that the film was written by a teenage Harmony Kareem based on the people he knew within the skating scene. Roger Ebert elaborates on this within his positive review of the film, stating that the movie's dialogue, which sounds authentic, was written by a 19-year-old named Harmony Kareem who lived in the world of skateboarders and suggested the casting of some of his friends to Clark. There are two extended rap sessions, one for the boys, one for the girls, in which they talk about sex, drugs and their lives. Intent on having his friends cast in the film, Kareen clearly knew the lifestyle and people similar to his characters from his own lived experiences. It's this dedication to the authentic portrayal of youth on the American fringe that would also inform his own directorial efforts such as Gummo and Julian Donkey Boy. This reality is demonstrated brilliantly, as Ebert has referenced, within a sequence where two groups, a group of boys and a group of girls, talk about their sex lives in explicit graphic detail, which teenagers use when left alone to their own conversational devices. The teenage boys and the young men brag, boast and flex about sex, discussing their sex lives like conquests for their own self-gratification, with no consideration or respect for the girls they sleep with. This is contrasted by the girls discussing their own sexual experiences. Their first time's never great. Understanding that the boys have taken them for granted, manipulated them to get what they want. There is a clear distinction between sexual positivity, which is present in this discussion when highlighting their positive experiences, and sexual exploitation, where they've been taken advantage of, only to be quickly discarded afterwards. Within Harmony Kareen's script, he recognised that this can be a significant difference between boys and girls, especially amongst boys who showcase sexually predatory behaviour from a young age. This is where Telly comes in. Telly specifically preys on virgins, pressuring them into unprotected sex with no consideration for who he has sex with, what they need, want or worry about. Telly takes, takes and then takes some more. This is a mindset in which Telly does not view the girls as individuals, but as conquests in a game of sexual addiction. It becomes abundantly clear that Telly has troubling views of women when he tells his friend Casper about wanting to masturbate at the sight of a young woman eating a watermelon. For Telly, his whole identity is sex and where he can get it. This includes the distressing reality that he is sexually addicted and will often disregard other people's boundaries if it means he can get sexual gratification from it. Within Corrine's script, the young writer recognised that sexually predatory opportunistic behaviour stems from a young age, as well as the potential threat of its influence amongst other young people aspiring for the same self-gratification that such abusive actions provide. Roger Ebert, in the same review, discussed Telly in detail, his dehumanising language and the possible reasoning behind his toxic attitudes, stating that Telly's language is like a series of ugly blows. He talks about his enthusiasm for de-virginising young girls. Casper cheers him on, and it becomes clear that neither one of them has any interests, any curiosity, any values, any frame of reference beyond immediate animal gratification. Kids is the kind of movie that needs to be talked about afterward. It doesn't tell us what it means. Sure, it has a message involving safe sex, but safe sex is not going to civilise these kids, make them into curious, capable citizens. What 
to realise, thinking about Telly, is that life has given him nothing that interests him, except sex, drugs and skateboards. His life is a kind of hell, briefly interrupted by orgasms. Most kids are not like those in kids, and never will be I hope, but some are, and they represent a failure of home, school and society. While Larry Clark's film does examine the necessity for safe sex, we'll elaborate on that later in the video, Roger Ebert is right to acknowledge that safe sex alone wouldn't alter Telly's, and under his influence, his best friend's Casper's attitudes too. The reasoning as to why these teenagers, and even children much younger than themselves, appear to be so sexually predatory such as Telly and Casper, or reliant on self-medicated drug fueled escapism, such as when a group of young boys, clearly children, smoke a joint together, bragging about how big a Hit they can take, as speculated by Ebert, is likely a fusion of socio-economic issues relating to their home lives, a lack of support within school, and a society quick to discard these kids and ignore the issues. While Larry Clark's film doesn't specifically elaborate on any origins for these characters, we can only speculate what circumstances drove Telly to define himself through sexual activity alone. We can, however, recognise that poverty plays a factor, Telly's mother has no money to spare, and Telly is unemployed, that the kids lack educational support and opportunities, and that each youthful generation has its subcultures which face disillusionment and numbing apathy at a world unaccepting and unwilling to support their needs. When faced with a world which rejects them, it makes more sense for these characters to create their own world of instant self-gratifications, even if it brings about its own difficulties. Briefly referenced in his review, Roger Ebert was correct to recognise that safe sex plays a part within Larry Clark's film. He elaborated on it further within this paragraph. A plot emerges involving two of the girls who go for an AIDS test. The result shadows the rest of the movie and gives kids its reason for being. The film is intended as a wake-up call, and for some kids, it may be a lifesaver. It is so raw, bleak and unfiltered, and yet there will be kids who should see this movie, and my hunch is somehow they'll find it. As a wake-up call, and a destigmatisation of young people having sex, Larry Clark's Kids encourages its viewers, no matter their age, to get tested, maybe even tested regularly, if it puts one's mind at ease. In the 90s, the HIV pandemic and the fears surrounding it was continuing, and stigmatisation persevered regarding HIV, AIDS, and young people having sex. Larry Clark's persistence to portray this subject matter through Jenny, who discovers she is HIV positive after her first ever sexual experience with Telly, demonstrates that it's the erasure of stigma which will encourage people to get themselves tested or be open about their own HIV status, especially knowing that this can impact anybody. While in the present day HIV isn't the source of fear mongering and concern that it once was, and rightfully so, as HIV and AIDS doesn't make for a death sentence due to the positive progress made in modern medicine. But Larry Clark's focus on Jenny's experience remains important, especially since, as of 2023, the amount of heterosexual HIV diagnoses has overtaken that of gay and bisexual men. It's essential to remember that HIV is still present within the sexual landscape, and while there is treatment and support available, first, people need to be aware of their own sexual health status. Furthermore, another aspect of Clark's film which retains its present-day relevancy is its focus on consent. This may be the most distressing aspect of kids, but it's a sobering, essential element of the film that aimed to raise awareness of consent back in the 90s. Clark's film recognises that consent can be withdrawn at any stage in sex. When the girls Telly has sex with begin to cry, begging him to stop, that is a withdrawal of consent. When a girl rejects the advances of an older boy, only to be overwhelmed by him, that is non-consensual. And with the film's horrific ending, where Casper, attempting to achieve Telly's sexually coercive nature for his own self-gratification, disregarding the needs of others, takes sexual advantage of Jenny as she sleeps, we recognise that this is not a healthy example of sex. This is a demonstration of abuse and assault. It's an unflinching scene that's understandably difficult to watch, but the intent is to challenge the viewer into recognising the necessity of consent. This scene is ugly, and this is the impact predatory behaviour has on its victims. Casper does what he does because he aspires to be like Telly, and in regards to how Telly takes advantage of who he has sex with, it wouldn't be beyond his capabilities to abuse somebody like this. 
If this scene makes you angry, if it upsets you, offends or distresses you, then it has served its purpose in forcing the audience to recognise why consent is essential. People should not experience this trauma just because selfish idiots want to get their rocks off. People should not experience this trauma full stop. That is ultimately what kids is about, the action of abuse for self-gratification of the abuser, and that includes a complete disregard for the individuality of the victim. In recognising how ugly this prospect is, we as the audience come to accept that there must be more efforts in dismantling such abusive attitudes, and those efforts need to start early. In conclusion, Larry Clark's Kids is controversial for a reason. It's offensive, it's shocking, disturbing, and borderline exploitative. But the film is also a source of important understanding towards a disillusioned youthful subculture often underrepresented and discarded, acknowledging that in ignoring these teens, it only fuels the developing culture of directionless, instant self-gratification and peer pressure, which, in the case of Telly and Casper, may also encourage abuse and exploitation, Telly serving as a nihilistic rejection of identity beyond sex, sex and more sex, no matter the consequences, Kids is like a cautionary tale recognising how essential safe sex, sexual health and consent remains, even amongst fringe youth groups. These elements are projected onto the Gen X skater teens of Larry Clark's films, but clearly their importance also extends well into adulthood and well into modern youth generations too. If the audience finds this film uncomfortable to watch, then the audience is also recognising the film's core tenets. Respect, consent, get tested regularly, and how vital it is to be able to recognise an abuser. A special thank you to my incredible tier patron supporter Gil, and my super tier patron supporters Constantin Bombelli, Jamie, and Milkway.